first of all, thank you for your time today and thank you in advance for the time that you're going to be dedicating to this presentation. Uh, I hope that you're going to find a lot of content there. So um, just as a bit of introduction about myself. Um, I work in Trend Micro as a sales engineer, but I uh, assisting customers understand how to adopt cloud services, specifically around the area of, of visibility, cloud security, posture management. Um, I started as a developer back in 2001 in back in Venezuela. That's Angel Falls over there in the winter, by the way. Best time of the year to see it. And since then, I've been working in the uh, power and engineering uh, sectors. Then I moved to Australia working as a developer, then uh, working in technical risk and security architect in the financial services industry for two of the biggest banks over there. Um, a lot of application security and digital identity there. And then recently, last year or so, I moved to Trend Micro. And I live here in Montreal now where I'm helping with cloud visibility. So I've been, since then, I've been doing, as you see, a lot of, it's taken me places. So please feel free to ask me all about uh, my experience while working in, the, in those many industries. Throughout the presentation, so today I'll I'll do I'll try I'll try to cover two parts two main parts in the presentation. So a bit of a discussion around some of our experience, my helping customers migrate applications to the cloud while work uh, working in conformity, and then try I'll try to do a bit of a, a demo there. So connecting the dots and and then some activity there. And then as Ron mentioned, I'll will be running some polls throughout the presentation because it will help me gauge. Um, I will uh, it'll help me understand a little bit where you guys are at and try to shape these to your answers to what's coming through. Throughout the presentation, as I mentioned, there's going to be polls. The slides are marked with that question mark. There's going to be links that I'm going to be sharing across with you guys. They're, they'll be available in the PowerPoint slide that you're going to get. You can also point your mobile devices, tablets, and so on to the QR codes, which is actually that's actually going to take you to re the resources that I'm sharing. This one, for example, takes you to the Cloud Conformity website. So with that said, let's go into a little bit of setup here, right? So keep this in mind, right? And today we'll be talking a lot about the cloud, but these are concepts that, are, that we kind of like play into what you guys have seen today in the, in the prior excellent presentations. It shapes, it, this is the shape of, the, of things to come. If you're trying to move applications into the cloud, these are the, your, the, your new environment looks this way. Okay, so services accessible from the internet, things that are being done on demand and self-service, you're sharing resources to some extent when out there in the cloud, things can grow rapidly. And in many ways, this is a common challenge for when you're moving applications and everything is measured, you pay for that. So keep that in mind. This is gonna play, play a little bit throughout the presentations, throughout my presentation as well. So, we asked you before, where are you in your cloud journey? And I'm sure you guys had an answer there. Have a thought again about what the what you selected there. And think of it in terms of these quality attributes that I'm putting here. What's the, the consider whether you are using you're understanding how you can build availability, whether you have applications that are going to be interoperating with other applications, especially their on-premise, especially if they're in a mainframe. Think about whether you're using services that are helping you and, and certain cloud services that are helping you, um, for example, make it easier for you to change and make changes to your system. Whether you're using infrastructure as code or not, whether you're relying on consoles to configure things. Um, whether you're using services that are gonna, they're helping you address performance needs or whether you're going to be taking advantage of all of the great sorry, cloud services available from GCP, Microsoft, and um and AWS for securing your data and information in the cloud. Are you going to be taking advantage of services that are going to help you show whether there's faults and issues on your application? And keep that in mind because that's that comes a little bit later. And how easy is it going to be, not just for your users, for you as solution, as solutions administrators, application administrators, infrastructure administrators, engineers, to accomplish your tasks? Have you got the tools and skills that you need? So um, with that said, and again, that keep that in mind, let's let's get started with what I want to present today, what I want to discuss that. And um, 
So as you're moving applications into the cloud, you will find that one of your challenges will be configuring the cloud services that you intend to use. Now, keep in mind, today I'm using AWS nomenclature. I have a similar slide that uses, utilizes only Azure services, uh, and I have one for GCP as well. The point that I'm trying to make is you, you will find the same challenge. How to better utilize services that are going to help you deliver on, the, on your functional and non-functional requirements, performance, cost optimization, and, and so on. If that, ideally, you will start to have ways to continuously assess your cloud, um, your cloud uh, workloads. And today we're we seeing a lot of presentations in which they're giving you strategies for moving things into the cloud, augmentation, whether you're going to rebuild your re-platform or re-host your applications, um, help from partners that are going to help you be take better use of, of the cloud services make, make that, you're, that you intend to use, make better, making sure that your application is going to be running up there, especially if you have legacy ones, helping you find the best path. And to some extent, uh, you're path into the cloud, and to some extent, this diagram talks a little bit about refactoring and building an application as a native one. So as every journey into the cloud, you will, you will start with the architecture. Why are you doing this? What are you trying to accomplish? How are you going to apply it? Go, goes back to the other presentations. Who have you got the tools? Do they know? Do these people have the skills to configure the cloud? And when do you intend to uh, achieve this? When do you want to have seen that, uh, when do you want to have your application running into the cloud? In a month, two months, two weeks? The point I'm trying to make here, uh, the, what I would like to present to you here, and what I'm trying to get you into a mindset here is to think about those design decisions, those architectural decisions that you need to make when you're moving applications onto the cloud. And what I want to run today is, is some of the most common configuration challenges we're helping customers with as they're configuring applications on the cloud. Um, throughout my time in Trent and before that, um, we've been helping customers in healthcare, customers in technology, helping financial sectors, some manufacturing as well. So I'm hoping, and these are common challenges that are coming out of that knowledge of helping them see their posture on the cloud scene, trying to config better configure cloud services to their advantage. To do that, I'm breaking the problem down into manageable pieces. And what I've, what I've done is appropriated some of the terms used in the control mappings in the NIST framework, specifically these four that you're seeing here. Again, there's a link there, feel, feel free to visit it. Uh, it takes you into the broad definitions of the areas. Obviously, with the time today, I cannot do a comprehensive coverage and description of each of the problems and each of the areas. What I'm showing you here are the most common challenges that we're seeing and helping customers with. Hopefully, you, you, you will find some common area here. And please, feel free to ask questions. Feel free to reach out if you, if you want to have a more detailed conversation there. So the first area that I want to talk to is challenges in identification and authentication and access control. And what we tend to see is um, challenges around to enable access onto cloud environments, whether people are going to be using single sign-on or not. Antonio, it's yes. Ronda, would you want me to launch the poll now on this subject? Oh, please, we... yes, absolutely. yes, yes, please, I'll launch it now. Okay, because it may, uh, when it launches, it may obscure your slide. Absolutely, all good. So what Antonio is doing, we want to make this as interactive as possible, get a better sense for what are your biggest identity access management challenges. Yeah, specifically think about provisioning, all, all everything having to do with permissions onto accessing the cloud, permissions, provisioning uh, user, user credentials, um, the new problem of cross-account access, like when you're going to allow uh, third parties to access your cloud environments. So the idea of this poll is to see if you understand whether you've actually run into this challenge, whether whether you're actually considering the requirements for this challenge, or if you're optimizing your way through this while using automation. Things like CyberArk and Conjure come to mind, or even Bolt. 
Well, Antonio, we're about evenly split across all four sections with uh, probably 30% more concerned about cross account access. And then oh. equally about 15 or so, 20% across the, the first three. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Rod. Thanks a lot. So going back into the presentation, guys, great to see that uh, the, 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 this is the representative of the kind of problems that you're seeing there, that you're, that you're, that you're facing with challenges that you're having when moving into the cloud. I'll work later in during the demo into showing you what some of the approach for these solutions here are. But I, again, that is understand you're not alone. We're seeing this all the time. And these are problems that you need to be thinking of. And remember, this is all about are you using services? Are you configuring services that are better helping you achieve this? The next area in which we are seeing uh, very common challenges is in the area, and I'll, I'll let you know in a second, right? is on the area around system and communications protection. So this is, think about security of interfaces, right? Protecting communications to and from the cloud. Um, how to enable access onto administration interfaces and APIs. Obviously, SSH and RDP is one of those, but you're all, I'm also thinking, we're also seeing access, challenges of accessing management APIs and consoles, right? How to better control API, uh, uh, configuring the cloud environments and so on. And obviously, access to resources, data storage, S3 buckets, databases, RDS, things like that, queues and events notifications. And Ron, when you're ready, just throw the... Yeah. Got it. So again, tied in with that is helping you understand the data protection issues. And exactly. I like this because even as you're out there in the virtual angel bee community, we want to engage with you. If we were doing live events, we'd ask everyone to raise their hands. Now we just ask you to click your keyboards. Yeah, it's a lot easier. And and what I'm hoping is people are see are are are, are seeing these are challenges that you're going to find across the that you're you're going to find based on the, on our knowledge and experience helping people with adoption of cloud services. This is also thrown a little bit into my own experience building security patterns for financial organizations. Um, what I'm trying to show here is that these are challenges that you, if you're not thinking about it, you should be thinking of. If you're if you're facing them now, there are solutions out there that can help you. And I'll go into that during the demo. Well, certificates and internet access are the two top issues with yeah. admin port access, the third. And they're both yeah. running about a third of the people are concerned about certificates and internet access each. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Next area I want to run into, I want to keep an eye, I want you guys to think about, and I think this one goes to the heart of this, configuration management, right? You're seeing the baselines in which you're going to evaluate your resources. So if you have engineers cutting infrastructure as code, if you have engineers configuring through the consoles, what are you using to evaluate that output? What are you using to compare yourself against? Are you using a known framework, NIST, CAS, or HIPAA, or something like that? What's your process for choosing the appropriate configurations for all of these services? And even how to enable change control on that, like how to prevent users from making unauthorized changes or helping them achieve and make the changes that they need to do. And in this time of automation, you have to consider as well machines doing this, Jenkins and things like that, things that are running in scripting and so on. And Ron, when you're ready, just throw the poll. Okay, hold it one sec. Um, two. And when you're choosing the answer here, think about this as, as what I've been saying, right? And you've, what you've seen today. Um, there are many ways to move your legacy applications onto the cloud. Think about the challenges. So if you if you're not sure what you should be comparing it yourself against. Well, here's, here's maybe, hopefully this is helping you realize that you're not there, like everyone is having the same thoughts. Or actually, what's what's an appropriate configuration? Well, give or take a uh, statistical margin of error, you're pretty much equal across all three of these configuration management challenges, Antonio. Thank you, Ron. Thanks so much. Thanks for your help. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk you a little bit into what an approach to addressing these problems could look like. And um, 
please consider this. So when you're thinking of these challenges, what I'm hoping is that help you shape the conversation that you should be having for facing approaching these challenges. And what I'm going to start with is by showing you rules. And what I mean by rules is things that you should think of when configuring, for example, securing your identity and access management onto the cloud. Again, I'm using AWS just to keep the things in context for the diagram that I've been showing so far. But these, we, these rules apply as well to environments in Azure and GCP. So things like, are you implementing policies for expiring user passwords? Or what level of access privileges are you going to give to that user? That touching on the, on the first slide that we thought of, that I'd show up today. What you can do with these, well, the approach to this is that you should first determine what is it that you want to achieve with that configuration. Should have users to have privileges, like admin privileges onto your cloud environments. And if so, why could be a risk if you misconfigure that? What would happen? What could you be enabled? You could be enabling someone to abuse their access and cause some damage in your environment, even shut down an application that is there in the cloud. Keep in mind that giving admin rights to a user will allow will affect your compliance to some standards. For example, NIS 853 in the case of in, in, the, in the case of North America. As usual with security, it's not just so much. The work is a, is too is has multiple. It's a it's, it's it's a complex problem. It's all it's only not just about choosing the configuration. It's also about how you can maintain it. So think about how you can audit what those configurations are there. So if you're so giving someone admin rights, you want to use user access revalidation all the time. So you want to have a way, a process, an implement a process in which you're running through a checklist. You're constantly evaluating the the security of your admin rights of your admin users onto the cloud. So you need to have a process for evaluating that and auditing that access. And if something goes wrong, you want to have a remediation approach. So something that is going to help you follow, a, have an inter, a, 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 an internal process that is going to have discipline that you know is going to be working on good information towards ensuring that your users have the access they need and nothing more. And what I'm doing here with this semi-practical demo is showing you how with the use of rules, essentially baselines and the ways to implement those baselines objectively in the cloud by having tools and services that can help you evaluate what's going on, how you can actually achieve those goals towards having better identity and access, and access management, access control, configuration management, and secure communications onto services. I'm going to run into some a couple of more here uh, access more. For example, let's go into um, services such as S3 because they touch and access to services. So things like public access, access from the internet. Sorry, there's the wrong one there, guys. So happens all the time. Unfortunately, we're still finding a lot of misconfigurations out there about people uh, granting. Uh, the internet essentially access to their uh, data storage so you do need to define what's what is what's the control the objective control the control objective that you want to achieve why not doing so is an issue and then obviously having a process for auditing and remediating that so hopefully you're seeing some of these you're seeing this in action uh, you, you 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 can see this in action in many of these tools but um, again, if there's any value in what you've seen today, please look, go back to the slide deck that I presented. Feel free to reach out so um, so we can discuss some of these challenges and how what are some of the techniques that you can use to better address these uh, these issues that could be on the cloud. Okay. 